Purchase. Mattress firm. Unjunk your sleep. City Field in New York. We welcome you to this presentation of New York Mets baseball on Picks 11. Today, the Mets play the Miami Marlins. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to City Field. I'm Gary Cohen. Keith Hernandez and Ron Darling will be along shortly. The Mets play game two of their four game series against the Marlins. The Mets won last night to go 20 games over 500, and they'll throw Taiwan Walker to the mound this afternoon, coming off a 10 strikeout performance against the Angels on Sunday night. Young left-hander Braxton Garrett, former first-round draft pick, makes his third start of the year for Miami. You know, Brandon Nimmo usually sprints around the bases, but he took a walk around the bases this week with Steve Gelbs. We'll get it. The here is that we are going to start at home plate, walk around the bases. When we get back to home plate, interview's over. Perfect. Simple enough? S simple enough. All right, so let's start going now. Okay. okay? <laughs> now, here's the, the one really important thing of any good interview. You want to make your subject comfortable. So, be honest with me, are you uncomfortable walking to first base and not sprinting? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I, I am a little bit uncomfortable walking to first base. Um, I, I don't know, I, my dad has always taught me to play the game hard, and, I, uh, and so I just always would hustle to first base. Uh, it started as, you know, just playing the game hard, and when you're a kid, you never know if the ball is going to get by the catcher either. So. You always run to first base in order to try and, uh, you know, like in case the ball gets by him, maybe you can take second base, especially with speed. But, um, you know, I, I, I just I really get really excited to, to get to first base. Uh, winning in at bat is, is something that's really exciting for me. So you talk about that excitement, right? And I, I think one of the, the most amazing things about you is that the joy that we've seen from day one with you yeah. has not let up at all years and years into the league yeah why is that why have you been able to maintain when so many people they come up as one person yeah. and for whatever reason maybe they take it for granted yeah. get a little jaded why yeah. does that not change with you? you you can you can get that way in the big leagues don't get me wrong it, it uh either one the the atmosphere can can change you the how you're treated can change you uh but for me I've always tried to and been able to have experiences that have kept me uh, reminded of how just how fortunate I am to be here. And I just try and go back to when I was 12 years old and was just dreaming about being that guy and playing in that stadium and how fortunate and how awesome I would think that was and how I wouldn't take any of that for granted if, if I were to go back into that 12 year old self. So that's how I've been able to try and keep the the youthfulness in, in, in me for, for so long. You have come so far in so many aspects of your game. The one part of your game, I ask you about it every yeah. spring, you say you want to work on it, yep. but then it never really seems yep. to happen, yep. is stealing bases. Yep. Why, as someone with the speed that you have, why has that never been something that you've been able to kind of get comfortable doing? Yeah, um, I can get better at it, um, but I prioritize, you know what, if I'm on base for these guys, I would rather take my chance of me scoring from first uh, and, and getting home uh, on a double uh, and all these guys that hit behind me have that opportunity than, you know, for me to get thrown out, you know, 50% of the time. Really, every other aspect of your game has come such a long way yeah. from the time you were drafted, from the time even you got up to the big leagues. Yeah. If you were to pick one that you said, I'm, I'm most proud, I've come the furthest in that regard, what would it be? I, I would say left-handed pitching. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say my ability to put up good at-bats and produce against left-handed pitching now, that was such a uh, glaring thing to me when I got to the big leagues um, that the fact that I was able to improve on that, uh, I really, I'm really, really proud of that. And I would say in a close second, it would be center field. Um, you know, taking that uh, that criticism and, and saying, okay, how can I how can I get better, and how can you guys help me to get better, and, and then applying that. All right, so we're at home plate, the slowest home run trot of your career. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. want to finish with one quick question, though, yeah. just team wise. You guys, for as long as you've been here, have gone on great stretches, and, yep. and there's always been this great potential. Yep. 
and for some reason it never quite get, gets over that finish line. Yep. Why is this year different? Why do you feel like this team, this manager, it's different? Yeah, here? I, you know, I, I would say it goes back to that. It goes back to, you know, the makeup of the team and the makeup of, of our manager. Um, you know, Buck has uh, been around the game for so long that we're, we're never going to be unprepared for a situation. And we have a lot of veteran guys, guys that have been really good and on the other side of things, sometimes really bad at times. And you need both of those experiences in order to succeed, I, I believe, over a 162 game season. Well, it's a really good thing, not just that you guys have that model, but that the ball was just rattling around the outfield this whole time, because now you can touch home plate officially. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get the yes. throw in, and we did it. Brandon and Nemo, our first ever round of the base with Steve yes, Gelbs. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thanks man. for having me, Steve. That's the slowest that Brandon has ever traveled around the bases his entire life. Thanks, Brandon. That was great. Thanks, Steve. Mets and Marlins, first pitch coming up. Well, it's great to see Eduardo Escobar back out on the field, fully healthy, went through all the tests after feeling a little dizziness and a little pressure in his ears, but he is 100% and ready to go. Got to see him before the game today, and he was smiling and happy, and so is Francisco Lindor, who got a big jolt last night from the presence of his mom. Here's your Marlins starting lineup brought to you by Catholic Health. Long live Long Island John Birdie who stole a base last night he's tied for the league lead in steals moved up to the leadoff spot today with Jazz Chisholm who's been slumping in number two hole Lewin Diaz gets his first start of the season at first base for Miami and Taiwan Walker coming off 10 strikeouts against the Angels yeah. goes to the mound one of his best starts a six innings only an earned run he faced the Marlins four games last year three starts on one with a 4.18 ERA by the way that's Ronnie's voice hi he guys like to speak uh, want tested testing one two three testing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your Met defense is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. Nito behind the plate, as Gary mentioned. Escobar back after a two-day uh, spell of uh, a little illness out in the outfield. We've got Canna with the left-hander. This is the starting outfield that they run out there. All right-handers except for Brandon. Brandon's already done his work for the day. Let's hang out with Steve. Taiwan Walker is ready for his first pitch of the day. John Birdie leads off, takes a fastball for a strike, and we're underway. Birdie won for five last night. Over 300 for his career against the Mets, getting a chance to play every day right now with Joey Wendell and Brian Anderson both hurt. Marlins have a lot of pieces missing from their lineup right now. And Birdie takes a slider off the plate, and it's one and one. Well, we didn't have the last game that Mr. Uh Walker pitched in Anaheim struck out 10 and in six innings. It was a very interesting start for Taiwan. It did not begin well. He had a rough first inning gave up four hits and as it turned out only one run because he got a double play ball but then he came in the dugout between innings and it was apparent to several folks in that dugout coaching staff and players that he had been tipping his pitches. He has a, uh, a couple of things that he will do when he's tipping his pitches and uh, they watch or on the watch for it at all times especially Jeremy Hefner. Marcana was also able to pick that up. Birdie chops one to the left side deep in the hole it's Lindor against the speed of Birdie one hop throw can't be handled by Alonzo and Birdie is safe at first. Nice effort by Lindor working against the speed of John Birdie but he's aboard to lead off the game. And it'll be a base hit. Well, he has to go in the hole here, backfire. He can't. He has to come up quick to throw. And you can see he didn't really have time to square up, and that ball sank into the runner. That could be a base hit, isn't it, Gary? It was a base hit, although it was in time. Although Pete's foot came off the bag, so it would have been safe anyway. So Jazz Chisholm will come up with a man on, and Birdie, who is 15 for 16 stealing bases, a little shaken up after running that play out. Maybe. A deke. Oh, Gary, you're so cynical. <laughs> Hustling right out of the gate. Took that long last step. Sometimes that gets runners. Well, he's uh, he's 11 for 11 in his career against the Mets stealing bases, but he's got to work against that terrific move of Taiwan Walker. That was not it. Right. The setup. <laughs> That's the setup move. <laughs> he's got. 
Let's see what happens here with him. Ooh, the, uh, oh, he, yeah. oh, he just had a funky uh, landed awkwardly. You know why he had to get past the the, the Kulo of Alonzo there. The, that rump roast. <laughs> Those are the numbers for Birdie's career, but the bottom line 11 for 11 against the Mets, including one last night. Mets play the shift against Chisholm, who was 0 for 3 with a couple of walks last night. Jazz hitting for more power this year, hitting more fly balls than in the past, and he fouls back the fastball from Walker. And I can see why he's hitting more home runs, not the average, uh, is that he's got a big, more, more of an uppercut this year. And it seems to me like he's just trying to leave the yard. Birdie lengthens out his lead. And Walker with his A move, oh. and he just got back. Close. So he threw him the C move, the B move, and then the A move, and he nearly got him. Oh, he was he broke the wrong way. Ooh. He got back. I can't really tell when the tag was made. I think he's safe, Ron. Uh, yeah. Gary. Lefty has him. Oh, good point. You can drop that little right hammer on him. Splitter misses low, and it's one and one. Anyway, Taiwan came in after the first inning in Anaheim, found out that he'd been tipping, made the adjustment, and between that and the shadows with a four o'clock <laughs> start in yeah. Anaheim, he gave up only two soft hits over the next five innings and struck out ten and had one of his best starts of the season. There goes Birdie, and no throw by Nito, who can't come up with the splitter. And it's a stolen base for Birdie, his 16th of the year. He now is in sole possession of the National League lead, one ahead of Tommy Edmund of the Cardinals. He is so explosive. It's all about the first two steps on a stolen base. And that was a called strike, correct? It was. It's one and two to Chisholm. Nito couldn't handle it cleanly, so. Unable to get a throw away, but a runner in scoring position with nobody out. And Chisholm fouls one at the plate. So, Gary, you were talking about Walker and, and tipping his pitches. One of the things he does, they both kind of circle around his split finger pitch. And one of the things he does was with the runner on second, that sometimes he will give it away, and sometimes when guys are at the plate. But it centers around that split finger. We can't tell you, of course, what it is. Oh. And the breaking ball in there for a call strike three. So Walker gets Chisholm looking. And that's the first out. Oh. Well. Next to the game brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Oh my gosh. What am I supposed to do here? You know, I'm a methodical thinker. I think Ronnie should do it. He thinks quicker on his feet. Uh, uh, Johnny Cash, um, Pat Benatar. And uh, I've got the power. Um, oh. Well, it's anyway, a, folks, it's all about the bottom. What <laughs> from the bottom. Jorge Soler takes. Can we bring that back up again? <laughs> bring that up again. I have no idea what the guys in the truck are thinking. Now, folks, I, I, know, ask I don't you. know this, the reference to the song in the middle. Should we know that one? Yeah, fight the power. It's. Um, oh, oh Isley's? No, no. I want to say. Maybe NWA or oh, what is this like? Hip hop. Hip hop. Solaire carves one foul and it's 0 and 2. Solaire two for three last night. I've got the power. I don't know that one. I've got the power. Anyway, two walks or fewer. What the heck with the stuff up top, folks. Just look at the bottom. That's <laughs> that's the important <laughs> stuff. McNeil holding the runner and Birdie's running and it's in the dirt and Birdie steals third. Wow. Even with McNeil holding him on, Birdie got a great jump and with the pitch in the dirt, Nito had no chance. So two stolen bases in the inning for Birdie, 17 for the year. Not that great lead. He's just so quick. You can see him. It's like a little motor scooter boy. He can get get the acceleration, quick acceleration. So the Mets will bring the infield really? in. One and two, the count on Solaire. Surprise. Going for the strikeout. Oh. He gets it. Splitter at the knees. Solaire down looking. Two men down. Boy, oh boy. 
Well, two great pitches to Chisholm, the breaking ball, and here, good split finger, light, late movement, and catches the knees. He's throwing that pitch 30% of the time this year. The batting average in at bats that end with a splitter against Walker is 173. So why wouldn't he throw it more? Hmm. Keep an eye on uh, Birdie. He might try to steal home. He's done that against the Mets before. Here's Garrett Cooper. And the fastball just misses low. Cooper having a terrific year and a Better month of June. Two hits last night. He's hitting 429 this month. And Cooper takes a slider on the corner for a strike. It's one and one. I think more importantly, the, the he won't steal home, but what he can do because Escobar is pushed back, anything that gets 10 feet away from uh, Nito, he's coming. Grounded foul. Uh, Keith, do you see how close Abasil Garcia and the on deck circle is to home plate? I would, if I was Bronny, if you were pitching him, would you ask them to move him? I would. Or would you pull a bull Durham? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I'd make a move, but I, I would look over there. I mean, you can't do that. Use it as a chip. That is way too close. Walker ahead one and two. And the slider misses two and two to Cooper. Cooper DHing today. With Lewin Diaz playing first base. Now he's going back to the on deck circle now. I'm surprised Buck didn't pick up on that because the manager can say to the umpire, get him back in the on deck circle. 2 2. And that's on the outside corner. Strike three call. Three strikeouts all looking after Birdie gets aboard. Mets lineup brought to you by Stop and Shop. Feed the moment. Eduardo Escobar back in there at third base, batting seventh. J.D. Davis gets another crack at D.H. after an RBI hit last night. That scored 10 runs for the ninth time this year last night. That equals the number of double digit games they had all of last year. Braxton Garrett the seventh pick in the country for the Marlins in 2016 coming off his best start against a real tough Astros team when five and two thirds only gave up one unearned run. He has difficulty with left handers. This will be his third start of the season. Brandon Nimmo leads off. Sun comes out. Brandon takes a strike. Nothing at one. It's kind of a cool day. A breezy. Wind blowing. What's that from the west here? Northwest. Yep. Unseasonably cool for the 18th of June. That's pulled down to first. Lewin Diaz slick with the glove. Gets the first out. Take a look at your Marlin defense brought to you by your local tri state GMC dealers. Nick Fortes behind the plate. Uh, uh, at first base, Lewin Diaz, who I think has a nice glove. He just made a nice play there, routine play, but he's smooth. And I'm surprised they haven't given him a chance to play a little more. Soler, De La Cruz, and Garcia round out the outfield. Here's Starling Marte. 0 for 4, drove in a run last night. Play against one of his former teams, and he takes a fastball inside for ball one. This is the eighth rookie to start a game for the Marlins this year. Yeah, they've used 10 different starting pitchers already this year. It's kind of a trend for Miami throughout their history, and part of it has to do with how many times they've broken down mm -hmm. successful teams. It's rolled slowly out to short. Rojas waits on him. Marte not running full speed, still recovering from the quad. And Rojas throws him out two out. If you go back to the Marlins beginning in 1993, they have thrown more starts by rookie pitchers than any team in the major leagues. 1,013 starts by rookies, including today, in their 30 years. Well, here's Lindor, who provided the keynote last night with a three run homer, a 440 foot blast, as longest as a Met. And look at that key arb, uh, statistic right there. He's one away from. The half century mark in RBI. What a productive year he's had. Tied for third in the National League and runs batted in. And then Garrett hustles one onto the outside corner for a strike. You know, I use past tense there. He's having. It was a proper phraseology here. 
right? Correct. Well, he is in the midst of having. <laughs> okay. Therefore, it is present rather than past. But so far, he has had yes. a really good season over the first 66 games. So you take your pick. I, I open the door for Gary. My fault, folks. <laughs> And what we don't know is what kind of season he will have yeah. <laughs> from this point forward. Oh. Because none of us, as much as we try, can predict the future. You hear that, weather people? One, <laughs> two. It's sharply. Rojas on one hop has it. E. And he throws out Lindor and Braxton Garrett. Brought to you by Nissan. There's no escaping summer savings at the Nissan Summer Event. Shop NissanUSA.com. By Spectrum, switch and save up to 60%. Visit SpectrumMobile.com. By Raymore and Flanagan, thousands of items in stock and ready to deliver. And by Stellar Artois, make time for the life Artois. Please drink responsibly. Nice view of Central Park on a cool June afternoon. Second inning with no score. Obviously, Garcia leads off against Taiwan Walker. Garcia two hits last night. Both were to right field. And a sinker from Walker gets a swing and a miss. To counter that first pitch hit into right field. Three straight called third strikes. My goodness. I can just hear the fans saying, get the bat off your shoulder. <laughs> There's Big Don. Don Mattingly now in his seventh year skippering the Marlins. I have got to go down and say hello to him tomorrow. I was going to do it today, but. I always forget that there's traffic on Saturday and I got stuck on the Whitestone and that exit coming in and uh, that is a long wait. Two and two to Garcia. We need to get you like, you know how they have the um, the train to the plane, the monorail. We need to get you like a direct bullet train from Sag Harbor to City Field. I got a better idea. Give me a seaplane, land me in the, in the there you go in the bay over there. Talking. <laughs> two hopper to McNeil. Had him played perfectly, and he throws out Garcia one away. Lewin Diaz called up yesterday when Jesus Aguilar along with Jesus Sanchez they both went on the COVID IL and Diaz made his season debut last night came in the game as the DH midway through the problem though was when Diaz got called up from Jacksonville his equipment bag got left behind and he did not have a first baseman's mid and there's no other left handed first baseman on this team. Uh, so they had to get him a new first baseman's mitt today oh, and wow. break it in as fast as they could. Wow. Driven out to left center. Nimmo giving ground. Gets there. Two out. <laughs> Sunday night's on Pix 11 at Sports Nation with Mark Malusis, Joe Masseri, and Justin Walters. Tomorrow night, the guys will have an all will have all the latest news around New York baseball, and they'll get us up to date from Jets minicamp, which took place this week, right here on New York's very own. Yeah, so the uh, the coaching staff for the Marlins was down in the tunnel before the game, just whacking the yeah the heck out of the the new first baseman's mid. They have this uh, glove hammer that just you can just slam it into the glove. No, I mean the glove was on the ground and they were taking a bat. Oh, really? And attacking it. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Just everything they could to to try and break that leather a little you bit. You think they would have an extra first baseman's glove, right, left, and a catcher's glove wherever they went? Well, it's like when uh, Ari Dickey was pitching and he had to carry around his own knuckleball right. catcher's mitt for whoever needed it. Kevin Kears will have one. I know it. I used to always go through two gloves a season. I would switch out and, uh, at the All Star break. Which the all second half is shorter than the, the uh, less games. So that glove would still be reusable, and then the next season, 
I would be able to use the glove in spring training and break in my new ones. And I'd break in two in spring training. What was the model number? Rawlings what? Uh, C something. I yeah. forget. It's been a long time. Ron. Sorry day. about that. It was, you know, I got a, it's going to be, innings going to be over here. One and two to Rojas. And it takes a splitter down. I bet you Yo-Yo Ma would know the, uh, the instrument number. <laughs> There's Pete's glove. He's got a Rawlings. He's got the, he's got the uh, no gold label on that one yet. I like the blue. I like the I like the lacing. Yeah, I would nice. have, I would have used that. I, I would have won a darker blue, like net blue. There's polar bear on the thumb. It said gold glove on mine. I know. <laughs> You've heard. <laughs> <Right now. laughs> do they? They should do it. They should do the gold glove um, things like the. Uh, like Ohio State does with the Buckeyes. Yes. For every gold glove, they should put a new, oh. a new logo on the glove. That would be. Right. That would have been a little crowded, wouldn't you think? <laughs> Hashtag 11. <laughs> oh, what would Greg Maddox have done? I'm in such a good mood today. I had a good night's sleep finally. Rojas goes down swinging, and that retires the side. Taiwan Walker's retired six in a row, four of the six via the strikeout. Mets and Marlins last night, round one. Mets won a 10 to 4. Mets and Marlins are playing 11 games in a three week span after not seeing each other for the first two and a half months. Pete Alonzo leads off in the home second and takes the slider inside from Braxton Garrett. Pete hit his second career grand slam last night. Both have come this year. His 19th home run that leads the league. 63 RBIs that leads the league. What a year. Power report brought to you by Astound Broadband, powered by RCN. What, what pace is he on, Gary? I, I'm bad at math. I admit it. 19 divided by 66 times 162 is 47. Is that the formula? Yeah. You divide by the number of games and you multiply by 162. I always was never checked into math class. <laughs> What did you do? Oh, I just barely passed. That's what I did. Were you studying your uh, your, your no your playbook? I just had no interest in math. C minus. Get moving on. And that fastball just missed inside. This was the grand slam last night. Yeah, first pitch jumped on the guy struggling out there, throwing a lot of pitches, and he ambushed him. That's. that's uh, Buck Showalter's famous uh, fa favorite term, ambushing. Off Tommy Dance, just over the fence. This one's lifted a shallow left center, and on comes De La Cruz. He dropped one last night. Not that one. He dropped one, but then he caught the one that he had trapped on the fence, which yes. is a far more difficult play. I, by the way, I asked Buck today about the placement of the runners, and he said that he was going to. Ask further about it with with some of the um, some of the higher ups, mm -hmm. but he was more interested in talking about the obstruction call in the Philadelphia Washington yeah. game yesterday. Did you see that? Yes, I did. And he was not pleased at all about the way that was called. There's Mark Canna. I thought it was borderline. Uh, the, 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 it was the, the the was the shortstop right. Or the middle, one of the middle in shorts up was Short trying stop. to get out of the way. He Dole was for the ball, didn't get it. And in Buck's estimation, you can call obstruction on that. That's a 50 50 call, but that the runner should not have been awarded home. No, play. you can't give him the extra base, you give him third base. No. Silly call. I mean, it's, it's, it's the umpire's judgment as to whether as to where the runner gets placed there. But right. when you get thrown out by 40 feet you can't say that that little bit of obstruction 
change the outcome of the play at home play. And ironically, the uh, play with the bases uh, with the first runners on first and second, McNeil was not awarded two bases. Right. He was placed on third. Right. And and you know, Buck felt as though McNeil should have scored, but. You know those calls aren't made by the umpires here so you don't ever get an explanation about why it's called that way back in the replay center. Cannon drives one to the left center that's down for a base hit. But a hop by De La Cruz and the Mets have their first base hit of the day. A two strike single for Canna. And Canna's really been on on point at the plate lately. He has been really focused swinging a good bat. <clears throat> To go back to that point of obstruction, I can't remember who the third base coach is for Philadelphia, but as he was waving Hoskins home, it was the first time he said, "You're going to be out. You're right. going to be out, but right. go." Dusty Wathen. Yes, that's and, what it was. And you know, the Philly people had a different perspective. They said that that was the right play to make because if he doesn't attempt to score, they're never going to give him yeah. the run. With J.D. Davis and obviously David Martinez had a very different view and uh, got ejected. I've never seen Davey quite as mad as he was about that. Well, uh, Dusty Walton also explained. He said he sent them because he knew even if they threw them out, the worst that could happen, he's going to move them back to third. He didn't know if he was going to. Which is not necessarily so. That's I mean, right. They would have been granting him third, and he gets thrown at the plate, and they don't feel as though he had earned the plate. Then he is liable to be put out. Mm. Plays not. It's not a dead ball. No. One and one to Davis. It was also a play today, which I had not seen in a while, in the Cubs Braves game. The Braves had a runner at first and one out. Adam Duvall had a short pop up to right that fell in, and the Cubs picked it up and got the force at second. And Duvall must have thought it was the third out because he walked off first back toward the dugout. And Eric Young, his first base coach, put his hand on him to steer him back to first, and the umpires called. Him out for coach interference. Yes. Haven't seen that one in a while. Can't touch a runner. Well, you know, the reason you, you usually you associate that with the third base coach, not the first base right. coach. Chuck Hiller, when I was with the Cardinals, did it once. Uh, sent a runner and then realized he made a mistake and he he, he, he lassoed him. I get concerned with Joey Cora because he gets so close to his runner. Oh, I'm not concerned. Runners and and the umpires. Joey Cora knows what exactly what he's doing over there at uh, Tessera Base. Oh. J.D. Davis takes a fastball outside and it's three and one. Did you recently do like a 23 and me or something? You're feeling very. Uh... I, I think it was. Um, I think it was Rosetta Stone. <laughs> Babble. J.D. over the last 19 games hitting 338. Had a hard base hit to right yesterday that drove in a run. Can at first with one out. And J.D. takes a slider inside for ball four. And the Mets have two men on. Now the Braves finally lost yesterday. And with the Mets winning, that stretched their lead to five and a half. But the Phillies won twice. They're now 14 and two over their last 16 games. 13 and two since Rob Thompson took over. Mm. Standings brought to you by your local Ford stores. Marlins 13 games out. They had a nice little hot stretch at the beginning of June, but that series in Philadelphia that preceded this one really took a little wind out of them. Lost two games on walk-offs. And now they've got an increasing injured list. Escobar first at bat back in the lineup, flies one deep to right center. De La Cruz slowing on the warning track. They come together. Garcia makes the catch. Both runners tag and they'll both move up. The Marlins very fortunate. Ball. Garcia and De La Cruz bumping as Garcia came over from right field to make the catch. A little lack of communication. Garcia is not calling for it. Neither one of them, are, you know, kind of pick him up late. But boy, oh boy, but another gift for the Mets if this was dropped. Well, because they bumped, it enabled not only Canada to move over to third, but Davis to advance to second. Ball carried a little bit out there to right center, did it not, Ron? The wind is blowing that way out of the northwest. So two in scoring position for Jeff McNeil, who's hitting 400 with runners in scoring position this year. And then he gets the first pitch slider off the plate for ball one. And they're just inviting Jeff to hit a little ground ball right where the shortstop should be playing. 
So you can look at Rojas up the middle. Birdie's playing in. I don't know why he should get back a little bit more. But all he's got to do is just slap one in that hole. Birdie just moved a little further to yeah. his left to cut down that hole a tad. But Keith's right. If you move back two or three steps, that would increase his range uh, there. Garrett's uh, looks pretty good. He's thrown uh, more sliders. His curveball is his strength, but he's thrown strengths with uh, strikes with his fastball. Oh, mm. okay. Two balls and a strike to McNeil. Jeff starts the day fourth in the National League in batting. Mm. Boy, Adam Beck behind the plate has had. Oh, there you go. There's the infinity yeah. leaders. But how about Goldschmidt? What a year! Beck has had a pretty generous uh, corner, outside corner. He didn't get the call. He didn't give it to the to Garrett that time. And oh. he got that slider in at the knees, and uh, McNeil didn't like that call. Well, uh, the pitch prior was a strike, so that one bent around the plate. It seems. So now they're even. Yep. Adam Beck, young home plate umpire, another young umpire, Quinn Walcott at first, Alan Porter, the crew chief at second, Lance Barrett, who had the plate last night, has third. Two and two to McNeil with two in scoring position. And Jeff Rockets one in the right field for a base hit. That brings in Canna. They're going to hold Davis at third. Jeff McNeil comes through again, drives in the first run of the day, and it's 1 0 New York. Well, another two out hit, another two strike RBI. Slider hanging. Just a hanger right there. He's lucky he didn't lose it. But Jeff staying disciplined. Not trying to hit home runs this year. And that's why his batting average is up there in the well up in the top ten. Keep the key to that at bat, every pitch away. Even a breaking ball kind of bent around, but most of the pitches away. 72 hits now for McNeil. Mets are playing their 67th game. Here's Nito, first and third, two out. And Tomas takes the fastball down for ball one. You know, Roddy, you were talking about. Braxton Garrett and his curve. He came out of high school. They were raving about his curveball. Mm. It's one of the best prep curveballs ever, but his slider has become his more predominant breaking pitch. Well, his breaking ball is too big. He's having a hard time throwing it for a strike. And he really didn't throw his slider much till last year. And last year he made seven starts for the Marlins. Didn't fare particularly well, walked too many hitters. It's an interesting draft in 2016. He was picked seventh. Previous picks are Moniac, Senzel, Ian Anderson, who's really been great, Riley Pint, Corey Ray, and AJ Puck. So a lot of guys who haven't quite made it yet. Yep. Senzel's been a pretty good player. Yeah. When healthy, but to say it's still not an exact science taking these guys in the draft. Well, especially high school kids. I think that's the biggest crap shoot of all. Mets took one of the, the biggest flyers ever when they drafted Brandon Nimmo. That's worked out okay. Nito gets one in the air to right field. The wind's going to help it. Back goes Garcia to the warning track. He makes the catch. And that retires the side. <laughs> Mets get one run on the McNeil two out hit. And they give Taiwan Walker a one nothing lead as we go to the third at City Field. Third inning, Taiwan Walker's <laughs> take to a one nothing lead. Nick Fortes will lead off for the Marlins, and we check in with Michelle Margot. Michelle. Gary thanks well now that we are nearing the halfway point of the season I wanted to take the temperature of the pitching staff and their thoughts on pitch calm. the guy on the mound Taiwan Walker said that he uses it in about half of his start so far this season he really only uses it when a guy is on second but the most unexpected benefit that he said is just how much quicker it is the catcher can really just call the sign whenever it doesn't have to be when they're on the rubber they can be walking around it's just a lot faster and it's only two complaints as Fortes. Gets a ground out to short or to sorry to second 
his only two complaints so far are the fact that it's difficult to hear in loud stadiums. He said he wishes it got a little bit louder and that it's uncomfortable to wear because of his hair. He said he wishes it was a little bit slimmer to fit in that hat better. But I asked both he and Carlos Carrasco if they would suggest that the pitcher is the one calling the pitches so that they don't have to shake off the catcher. But because they're not supposed to wear any type of wristband, they're not really sure how to implement that. But both seemed very high on the idea of calling the pitches themselves. Very interesting. I think he needs to get a haircut. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not. Perfect. I also threw out the suggestion of maybe they think the umpire should know what pitch is coming so that they don't get crossed up. And both answered with a resounding no. So <laughs> got shut down on that. What are your thoughts? Well, the catchers are, um, I mean, that's our last bastion. They love being able to call the signs. They don't want to give up uh, that right. De La Cruz toward the hole. Great snag by Lindor. He sets and fires. Stretched by Alonzo, and he got him. Oh, wow. Beautiful play by Lindor. Great help at the other end by Alonzo. And that is a key second out. Well, oh, beautiful backhand here. Oh, and not much time, just to plant and throw. And a long hop for Pete. And no challenge by the Marlins. They were thinking maybe Pete had come off the bag, but he was able to stay on it. And that's just a very nice play by Mr. Lendor. Just kept that toe on the bag. Well, Pete was afraid he was going to get trampled. Nicely done. Walker greatly appreciative. Taiwan's now retired eight in a row, and here's John Birdie with two out. I was thinking that if the, they did want to have the pitcher call the pitches, all they have to do is put a little microphone in the glove. Put your glove over your face. Okay. Say whatever you need to say, and then your catcher knows what you want to throw. Well, we think the problem is, is that how do you regulate in a big stadium the uh, the sound level into the catcher? Because what if the hitter picks it up? Right. Right. That's the problem. Well, he'd have to have an earpiece as he, opposed he will, to something in his hat. Yeah. Right? They, well, you know, I mean, they haven't got got it researched enough to deal with the loud crowd well, so was, there's still a I, you know I asked that question when uh, when we were briefed on this right before the season yeah. Major League baseball was uh, was talking about the implementation of the pitch com and I said what about if they tested it with 40,000 people in the ballpark they said no but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out and that's really been one of the bigger problems swing and a miss good slider by Walker and he has his fifth strikeout through the first three innings. Strong start for Walker. He's up one nothing in the third. Download the MLB app to get the latest on your New York Mets video highlights breaking news live pitch by pitch updates stat leaderboards and much more. Home third inning top of the batting order Brandon Nimmo takes a slider off the plate from Braxton Garrett. Nimmo grounds it out his first time up. Nemo Marte and Lindor in the third. Garrett making just his third big league start of the year. Made five starts in Triple A for Jacksonville. Two and one, three point one two there. His his problem over the first couple of years of his career in fits and starts in the big leagues is that the control he's shown in the minors he's not been able to translate into the majors. And Ronnie you see That's, that so often with young yeah. pitchers guys who have confidence in throwing their throwing strikes in triple A sometimes pick when they get to the big it's, league. It's a common thing as you see the wind really whistling. That's a common thing Gary because you know you're the man in triple A. You've established yourself as one of the better pitchers in triple A and then when you come up here you're fifth on the staff. He's taking over for Eliezer Hernandez who was sent down. So he's being put in here and there's pressure to stick. I've got to be great because I want to stay in this role and you put a little pressure on yourself and the guys who are coming up are not no names they are guys that you know the names and you know the back of their baseball card and you got to get over that you've got to get you can't thrive until you stand on that mound and you say my stuff mm -hmm. is better than yours three two to Nemo and he bounces that one to Chisholm plays the short hop and throws him out one away. And that takes time. It's not easy to 
the face of Mike Schmidt or the face of Willie Stargell and, and, and feel like you're better than them. Now, what what exactly is is that animal? It's a, a po it's a Pokemon Gar character. Garkiron. Yeah. It's like um, it's like the Gorlock. Well, Gar works because we call you Gar. Ron works because that's what people call me. But the K E I, it's a little rough. Well, I guess he didn't want to go armpit to armpit. <laughs> So he removed a couple of letters. But it, the thought was nice. Beautiful. I mean, I'm assuming this is about us. Be, no, well, I could be wrong. Oh, could, well. That could be his last name. The dead giveaway is number one. Number one. <laughs> In your heart, slide into center field by Marte. And he's got the Mets' third hit of the day. A one out single for Starling. Throwing a lot of fastballs, Garrett. Close to the plate, Starlin. That ball had a lot of plate. He covered it. Starlin likes that high ball. Belt high and up. <laughs> one out and one on. Here's Lindor who grounded out to short his first time up. Three infielders on the left side against Francisco. Braxton Garrett staring down Marte. Yeah. We haven't seen a good move from Garrett yet. Not that he doesn't have one, but he just has not gone over there with an A move. Good stop by Fortes to keep that from going to the backstop. It's amazing when you see all different pitchers and that breaking ball, which is his strength. But you can see, Gary, it's such a big breaking pitch that it's hard for him to find the center of the zone, especially early in the count. He's 24 years old. Just a handful of big league starts under his belt. Lindor's home run, and that was dead central. Change up, if I recall. Yes. Mm. You can tell you're having a good offensive season as a team when you can have as good a night as the Mets had last night against a quality pitcher like Pablo Lopez. Well, the Mets have been doing that. Pretty much all year long because they're just pesky hitters. They're they're hard, they're tough outs. And a little better defensive effort by the Marlins. It might have been six shutout innings from Lopez. Well the Mets will certainly face one of their sterner tests of the year tomorrow. Yeah. When they face off against Sandy Alcantara, who you can make the argument might be the front runner for Cy Young right now. Good take by Lindor, and it's two and two. There are your Nissan probables for the remainder of the series. Alcantara against Chris ba Chris Bassett, who had a great bounce back performance his last time out. And then the lefties go on Sunday: David Peterson and Trevor Rogers. Two and two to Lindor with Alonzo on deck. Marte at first and one out. There goes Marte. And it's fouled off. Well, Marte must feel confident in that uh, leg injury that he had. That's interesting, right? Because he didn't bust it out of the box on the ground ball that he hit his first time up, yet was able to kick it in gear mm. to try and steal a base. I guess that's uh, judicious load management. <laughs> or a setup. You never know. 
Doesn't go this time, and Lindor hits it deep to left center field. Back toward the warning track, De La Cruz, it's out of here! Lindor homers for the second straight day, a two-run shot. He hit it against the wind, his 11th home run of the year, and it's 3-0 New York. On a different kind of day, that ball could have been 25 rows deep. But it had enough to clear the wall for Lindor's 11th home run. 50 and 51 RBI for the year. High fastball out over the plate, and he got it. I saw Francisco before the game today, and we were talking a little bit about his mom and what kind of an inspiration she was and I said to him what I said on the air last night that he just looked like he had a different sense of calm and he said of course I did my mom's here yeah. and the last two nights he has looked as good as he's mm -hmm. looked all year Alonzo pops one up into shallow right and Garcia under it. Two out. Well, uh, they called for the pitch up in the strike zone, but they wanted it in. And the pitcher shaking his head because, well, they want the ball up. I threw it up. Mistake. But it needed to be in. <laughs> and the family rocket with Francisco's second home run of this series. God. Makes me so happy when I see those kind of scenes. Reminds you of your own family. 11 home runs now for Lindor. That's just his third as a right hand batter. So six RBIs now in the first 12 innings of this series. And he now has 51 runs batted in for the season. And kind of takes it inside. Mark at a base hit to left center, scored the first med run in the second inning. So Garrett, who did not allow an earned run over five and two thirds in his last start last Saturday against the powerful Astros, has given up three in the first two innings today. And he buries that slider, and it's two and zero. You know, I was thinking of Garrett uh, during this inning, and I think one of the most underrated pitchers I saw, kind of my generation, was Jimmy Key. Left hander with a big breaking ball, and you know, that would be a great comp to say to Braxton, you know, this is how he got out. So, you know, try to copy some of this stuff. Jimmy used to sink that fastball away, cut the ball in on righties to keep him honest, flip him that big curveball when he got ahead. It was just a, it's a pleasure to watch him get outs. We would probably have to refine. The oh, break on his slider. A refined break on his slider or cutter. Um, but he's got the big curveball. But you have to refine his control of his fastball. And there's the curveball. Is that the first one he's thrown to? Yeah. Uh, no, the hanger yeah. to uh, McNeil might have been right. a curve. Yeah. And he's had a, his problem today, Garrett, has been that he has not been able to get his slider over consistently. So he's had to throw a lot of fastballs. And if you're paying attention on the bench, obviously Lindor did, you're going to get a fastball, particularly if he gets behind the count or first pitch fastball. Also, Gary, Jimmy used to pitch to contact, something that's a lost art these days. Box around by Fortes, full count to Canna. We've been doing these comps all year, I know, but yeah. here's the latest on Francisco Lindor. He's got 51 RBIs. It's June mm -hmm. 18th. Last year he got yep. 51 RBIs on September 12th. <laughs> and he came into the game fourth in the National League in RBI and this pushes him ahead of Crone from Colorado because Rockies play later tonight out in Denver so he's not had a chance so Lindor now is pushed ahead of him he is just four behind Goldschmidt for number two. Had a big night last night at two home runs, drove in five as the Rockies beat the Padres. One was only 486. Yeah. <laughs> Padres, though, stayed in first place for another day. 
can't win in, that, um, in Colorado. Eight straight losses in Denver. Dodgers lost to the Indians in extra innings. Dodgers are having a hard time. Did I say Indians. I got to put money in the. Oh, well, we Guardians. can't do it here because people take it. We'll Guardians put it in the bowl. Won five straight. That's right. That's what happened the last. Time. That's right. When we first moved here to City Field in 2009, we we put together a kitty for every time we said Shea. That's right. And we had some major, do not major dollars, but we had enough, a, to, for enough, dinner. enough, enough for a nice dinner. Well, it became enough for someone else's dinner. <laughs> we never found a culprit, did we? <laughs> I don't know. Keith treated the next time we went out. Did I? <laughs> I don't Eighth pitch of the at bat to Canna, <laughs> and it'll be a knife. Canna, Canna is just a tough two strike out. Well, in Chicago this afternoon, there is the possibility that the Braves could lose for the second straight day. They're down six to two as they go to the ninth. Wouldn't that be sweet? They get an off day and they lose their momentum. How about that? 14 straight wins. The Cubs had lost 10 in a row, and now it might turn for two straight days. Cat is on base with a walk, and the inning continues. Second walk given up by Garrett. Drive around the majors brought to you by Hyundai streaking and struggling. Billy swept a doubleheader yesterday. Kyle Schwarber's reached base 22 straight games, and then there's the Nats who are retiring Ryan Zimmerman's number today. So they have something to celebrate. Josh Bell's been red hot. So we talked about Jimmy Key and the left hander and Garrett and Mel Stottlemyre Jr. is out there to talk to his young pitcher and his father when Key was with the Yankees was his pitching coach. All comes full circle. Yeah, that's right. As long as we're talking about relatives, and uh, we have a moment. Last night, a kid named Buddy Kennedy made his debut for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Bud Kennedy is from Millville, New Jersey, and is a good friend of Mike Trout. But genealogically, Buddy Kennedy comes from money. Yes, he does. Literally, <laughs> he is the grandson. A 15 year big leaguer Don Money who played okay. for the Phillies and the Brewers. I, well, I remember Don Money when they went to Seattle. He was like the, the star of the Seattle pilot, Pilots team. Right. I want to think that Don Money was still on that Brewer team uh, in 82 in the World Series. Yep. Yep. Tail end of his career. There's J.D. Davis. So I think that's great. Right? And in fact, they were interviewing. Don Money, who was in the stands while Buddy Kennedy got his base hit. JD drew a walk his first time up. And you can tell it's a windy day. There's papers blowing across the outfield, there's a piece of paper blowing across the infield grass. One right near second base. They do a much better job now of sending out personnel between innings yeah. to pick up the garbage. It used to be that that would stay out there for the rest of the afternoon and it would just accumulate and everything would swirl and gather in one corner. And that fastball just missed. Fortes trying to frame it, but Adam Beck wasn't buying and it's two and one. Now they try to keep the field pristine. You ever watch the film of uh, Bobby Thompson's home run? Yeah. How of much course. garbage was that's on the field? That's right. When he hit it. That's right. You need a carting truck. I mean, Keith talks all the time about the infields. I mean, yeah, the grounds crew does a much better job, but imagine trying to field through a, a bunch of hot dog wrappers. <laughs> Garrett having trouble putting this inning to bed. After a long turn at bat, he walks Cannon. Now he's behind three and one on Davis and about to throw his 30th pitch of this inning. If the wind was just right in San Francisco because it was a chain link fence, all the papers would just stick to the fence. <laughs> and JD swings and misses at a fastball, and it's three and two.
But when you're a manager, it'll uh, make you a patient man. You got to sit there, it's very stoic, and uh, not show emotion. I think more so today with the camera coverage, you can't be as verbal as you'd like. Mm. Canna gets set to run. And Davis lines one up the middle for a base hit. Canna will stop at second as De La Cruz fields it cleanly. And so JD is aboard for the second time. He just keeps hitting bolts. Mm. Another fine at bat. And I think Don is uh, does not want to get into his bullpen. He's kind of hoping that. Mr. Garrett can get a third out here. I just feel that J.D. Davis' swing with two strikes has been cut down a bit as well. You know, the Marlins were hoping for better offense this year, but they figured that every day they'd be able to throw a quality starter out there. But because of injuries, that's just not the case right now. As the curveball's in for a strike to Escobar. You know, they've got pitchers on the shelf. So they've got the top two in Alcantara and yeah. Lopez who have been wonderful but after that it's been a little shaky. And here's Garrett making his third start and having a rough afternoon so far. It's a good slider to Escobar and it's over two. You know when you're a young team and have young pitchers part of playing the games is also the development of those young pitchers because if there's any time you want to go to the bullpen early it will be today because of who's pitching for you tomorrow. Now Contra's seven consecutive I think games seven innings or more. Best innings hitter in the league no question. Pull down to third. Birdie handles it cleanly. Nobody to throw to it second. Has to readjust and throws out Escobar to end the inning. Let's get a two run homer from Francisco Lindor to extend their lead. After hitting a three run homer. Well, the Mets are getting just their second meeting with the Marlins today. But they have certainly fared well against the division so far. 20 and 7 against the NLEs, one of the reasons they have a five and a half game lead. Jazz Chisholm leads off the fourth inning and takes a splitter for a strike from Taiwan Walker. As the Mets in divisional play, Alonzo is having a marvelous year, even better mm -hmm. against his own division. Look at that. Yeah, there. Oh boy, he got away with a curveball there. Chisholm shaking his head after not jumping on a hanging curve. Yeah. Oh boy. Took a call third strike his first time up. Walker's retired nine in a row. Chisholm flies one out to left and Canna with plenty of room. One out. Interesting. Uh, Chisholm ran by Walker. Walker had something to say to Chisholm. Chisholm had something to say to Walker. Tom wanted a big smile on his face. Yeah. He won the battle. Well, if, if they're angry at each other, uh, Taiwan wins that one. Mm -hmm. He wins that against most people, <laughs> exactly. by the way. <laughs> He's a gentle giant. Here's Solaire fouling one into the ground. You know what we never did last night? We never discussed the loss of Tyler or McGill for a month, at mm. least. You know, it's been such a great story this year, filling in. As the opening day starter and getting off to such a wonderful beginning. But, you know, with the Mets still treading water with Scherzer and DeGrom out, at least for the short term, losing McGill again after making just two starts is going to have an impact. Well, they're going to have to run uh, Peterson back out there, put him in the rotation. Um, but Williams will probably get some starts. It just, you know, it kind of takes away from your bullpen. Well, and what compounds that is the fact that unless something changes between now and Monday, all teams are going to be required to stick with 13 or fewer pitchers the rest of the season. That's at times carried 14. They've got 13 right now. But if you're going to use bullpen guys to start, then you might need more help. Driven out to center by. Solaire and Nimmo's right there to grab it. Two out. It's 11 straight now for Walker. But McGill, who had been out with biceps tendonitis, here they're calling it 
a strained shoulder and they're telling him not to throw for four weeks which means he's going to be out for at least seven weeks. You know you and I were uh, talking all of us were talking uh, in between innings and you know everything is connected so you're really working hard to come back from a certain injury and sometimes that can compromise another part of your body of or, or arm. He was also in the midst of an inning in which he'd thrown 28 pitches, yeah. so you wonder whether the cumulative effect there, coming back from injury, has some kind of impact. All things being equal, if you're able to get Churchill to Grom back, the way to get him back quicker maybe be out of the bullpen. Hmm. It's an interesting call. You don't have to ramp him up. I mean, he'd be a fascinating bullpen piece. I don't think that he would uh, go for that. <laughs> no, <personally. I> <laughs> no. Well, I don't think it's all his decision, I but know. I know what you're saying. <laughs> I know. What you're saying. Well, for a winning team for the short term, I think he would go for it. You know, with an eye toward getting back to starting later. And Trevor May is on his way back, but mm -hmm. he's not nearly as close to returning as he would like. Certainly not as close as Scherzer is. Scherzer looks like he's ready to go on a rehab assignment as early as Tuesday, and maybe after one rehab assignment, be ready to join the team in a week, mm. ten days, which would be fabulous if that comes to pass. And Degrom's still probably more like an All-Star break kind of thing, unless he ramps it up a little quicker. Three and two to Cooper. Rob through another bullpen session yesterday. And they have not said yet whether he's going to progress to facing live hitters or throw another bullpen session. All they said is that he's maintaining his progression. 3 2 to Cooper, and he goes down on strikes. High fastball from Walker for his sixth strikeout, and Taiwan has now retired 12 Marlins in a row. 3 0 Mets in the fourth. That's a good pitching. Look at the starters ERA <laughs> both sides. Very impressive. That's 110. The Marlins 19. Lewis Brinson didn't hit against anybody else, but he had a great year against the Mets last year. Home fourth inning. Jeff McNeil drove in the first Mets run. He leads off against Braxton Garrett and hits him sharply. To Chisholm who manages to snag it on a hop. And throws out McNeil one pitch one hard hit ball one out. Last year one of the most memorable games between these two teams came in the Mets home opener. Brandon Nimmo oh. making a stumbling catch against the wall. Great catch in center field by Starling Marte then wearing a Marlins uniform. Jeff McNeil with a game tying home run of the ninth. And then the controversial hit by pitch oh. that won the game. Michael Conforto sticking at his elbow. Marlins <laughs> insisting it should have been a strike. And the Mets won in walk off fashion. I remember that. I remember it well. Ah, yes. Tomas Nito flight out to right his first time up. And Garrett misses down with the change up, and it's 2 0. Oh. That's another smash, but this one right at Rojas. Two hearted balls, two out. Is that what you were talking about, uh, Jimmy Key? Well, did you contact? Jimmy would <laughs> give up a little uh, softer contact, but still, listen, it's better for the young pitcher to err on throwing strikes than to be at 75 pitches into the fourth inning or wherever he's at right now. That's the seventh out on the ground. So, what does that tell you? That's where one of his strengths is. Keep the ball on the ground. Get ahead. Not so easy, I know. And two ground ball outs from Nimmo today. And first pitch curveball out of the strike zone for ball one. It's getting a little brisk. It's definitely an unseasonable day. It was 68 at game time with an 18 mile an hour wind out of the north at west. It's going to be. A little warmer tomorrow, but still with a, a stiff breeze. So you come and dress warm. Yeah, it's a light sweater game or a light jacket tied around your neck or wearing it around the waist. Huh? <laughs> it's a hoodie day for me. There you go. They have their hoodies out in force. 
Fly ball foul. See, you scoffed when I told you that we were going to wear, you know, real clothes today well, as opposed to polos. I actually been freezing in a I went all out and put a suit on just for you. Very impressed. You got the pinstripe going and everything. And I've got a and, big, and, I, they, and they didn't even let you do the open. And I would like us all, since we're wearing coat and ties tomorrow, to wear suits because I got a, I got a, I've got a big surprise for you tomorrow on Father's Day. Really? Yes. Tomorrow Father's Day. So dress sharp tomorrow. Oh, I'll, I promise I'll dress. I've got Russ, uh, our our guy, on it, and uh, he will bring it to the ball yard, and we are going to be for Father's Day. Really? Yes. Can't wait to find out. What do you think? I don't know what he has in mind. I'm allergic to cats, you know. <laughs> Haji's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> One, two to Nimmo. And he takes sacred low, and it's two and two. So you're going to surprise us with something Russ is going to get. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, because I have to get to the park. Uh, Russ, as a matter of fact, I think has already had it done by oh. his lovely wife. Ron. At home. Ron. Yes. Keith has people. <laughs> yes, he does. He has. Well, I yes. know people. <laughs> Except when it comes to pruning roses. <laughs> well, it, the, there you should have had people. Yeah, I learned my lesson. Oh, how oh, sweet. That's, that's great. That's adorable. <laughs> Three, two. Yeah, that's bounced out mm. first. Behind the bag is Diaz with his new glove. Gets the three one put out and Garrett gets another ground out in the kip. That's though have a three nothing lead after four at City Field. I like day tomorrow with a limited time offer of 25 percent off tickets or you can go with Keith's gift. For more information <laughs> and to buy tickets visit Mets.com slash Father's Day. Just and call Russ. That's a 140 start. That's it's correct. Every Sunday is 140. Got to make room for Peacock. Mets will be the Peacock game the following Sunday when we're in Miami. That's right. Yep. So we get uh, an off day Thursday in Miami and an off day Sunday and there's an off day Monday. Which actually forget about the Sunday because that's not really an off day. But the Mets we we're talking about working around the absence of McGill. The fact that they have a few days off over the next week and a half works in their favor to try, try and tread water mm. until maybe Scherzer's ready to come back. Right. So they can go with four? Possible. I mean they may have to squeeze Williams in there in Houston. Here's Garcia who grounded out his first time up. That's right on the on, on the Bucks board he had Williams up there uh, for, for, for Tuesday. Hey, that's the super secret board Keith you're not allowed to share that. Okay. Dylan Floro up in the middle. <laughs> Are we allowed to say what the board's about without <laughs> mentioning names? That's the, that's the Wizard of Board, Wizard of Oz board. I mean, it's nothing new, right? Is it? No. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> Dylan Floro up at the bullpen for Miami with Braxton Garrett having thrown 75 pitches through four innings. Looks like he might be done. Avasil Garcia grounded out his first time up. And Taiwan Walker gave up an infield hit to John Birdie leading off the first inning. Birdie stole second, stole third. Walker left him stranded by striking out three in a row, and he's now retired 12 in a row. Mm. And he gets Garcia. Terrific splitter in the dirt for his seventh strikeout. So Walker who had not been striking hitters out before Anaheim had 10 in that game and already seven today. The Mets road ahead brought to you by MSC Cruises a world of discovery. And there you see that road ahead. We're on Pix 11 again tomorrow then on SNY Monday and from Houston Tuesday and Wednesday afternoon. Tuesday night Wednesday. Tuesday, yeah. Yeah. And the off day Thursday and as Keith mentioned after the Mets go to Miami and off day the following Monday. Are we allowed? Uh, can we, should we enlighten the fans about the, about the calendar up in Terry uh, in Buck's office? Or do we want to go there or not? I think he was saying no, not to go there. Okay. <laughs> like Sorry, folks. Kyle's went away. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, folks, I tried. I mean, Keith, you know, you're a, you're a free agent here. You can um, you <laughs> know, you, you, want. Oh, you, can right. step, you can step out on a limb if you'd like. <laughs> We're not going to cut it off behind you. <laughs> uh, 
Smith just misses inside the Diaz with a slider one and two. So the Mets so far this year, folks, have had a 15 and 7 April, a 19, an outstanding 19 and 10 May. And having a nine and six. Oh, strike three. Diaz caught on the inside corner. That's eight strikeouts now for Walker. And that's four called. Yep. Half and half. Inside corner is always a good pitch. Two strike. Oh boy, he got a little, little generous inside corner. Got him. Taiwan before that start last time out in Anaheim was averaging about five strikeouts per nine innings. And as we mentioned, he had the rough first inning when he felt as though he was tipping his pitches. So he struck out ten in the next five innings in that game, and then eight in the first five innings in this game. That's 18 strikeouts in the last 10 innings, which is a complete turnaround from what he had been doing before that. Miguel Rojas struck out his first time up. You know, he's got one of those rockabye baby wind ups, mm -hmm. emotions. Mm -hmm. He can put a hitter to sleep. He's very, not like no effort, and all of a sudden out of his hand it explodes. Yeah, you oh, have fouls off the high fastball one too. You got like that Tasmanian devil of what Scherzer brings to the plate, right? He's got that intensity of Bassett, and he's like the the cool hand Luke. Yes, <laughs> just yes, effortless, and just one last little quick ex exertion of power to release the ball. O2 coming. Mm. And that just missed below the strike zone. One and two. His split finger changeup is nasty today. It's dropping a foot late. He wants to throw the slider. A little dribbler foul. Taiwan is basically replicating this year what he did the first half last year. Yep. And now it'll be very interesting to see as this season continues to unfold whether he can keep up this pace. One two coming and a half swing he went around strike three and Taiwan Walker strikes out the side in the top of the fifth. Nine K's for Walker in the first five innings. We're halfway through it's three nothing New York this week and showing you kids playing baseball all around the world. Isn't that great? In the Dominican Republic. That's where it starts. Softball, baseball. Look how big that mitt is. Oh the wristband. You gotta have the big mitt uh -huh. to hold that big ball. Did they win the championship? They got the trophies. Nice. And they all got one. Oh nice. Senegal. That's nice. our first picture from the African continent. Ah, very sweet. That is uh, that's straight overhead. Right oh my there. goodness, nice! Look at the that's, coach that's studying. A little, a little Jim Bouton overhead. <laughs> there you go, Keith. That my fave. Her tongue is already blue. Is that a polar bear right there? I don't know. The kids in shorts today, you think they're a little chilly? No. Nah, kids, no. No. Adults, yes. It's a brisk day in the middle of June with summer just a few days away. You wouldn't know it. Veteran right hander Dylan Floro on to pitch for the Marlins. It's kind of a struggle so far for Floro. has been one of the best pieces out of their bullpen the last couple of years. She started the season a little later. Starling Marte leads off in the home fifth. Lindor and Alonzo to follow. Mets got a run in the second, a two run homer from Lindor in the third. Marte had a base hit his last time up, one for two on the day. Floro, as Ronnie mentioned, got a late start this year, missed the first month with some arm soreness, and since coming back, his velocity is way down. A full two miles an hour below his numbers last year. Second year with the Marlins after a nice stint with the Dodgers. By the way, did we mention that uh, 
grounds crew has done a great job between innings picking up the napkins. They have. And the other debris off the field. Pristine as the inning began. One and two is a lone napkin wafting out know, above second base, which is drawing everybody's attention right now as they're trying to figure out where it's going to land. It's taking off. Got an updraft. Bye bye. That's if you look at that and find out which way the wind's blowing on it's a like, pop up. It's like a helium napkin. Napkin. Slider misses off the plate and it's two and two. And there it goes. Where will it come down? Up. Oh, oh, oh San Francisco. Stuck in the screen. <laughs> there you go. And there. Trapped. Shall, shall he rest? Trapped. 2 2. Broken back. One hopper. Rojas guns down Marte. One away. And we check in with Michelle. Thanks, Gary. Well, Sterling Marte has always been a consistently good player, but he has really stood out to hitting coach Eric Chavez. Chavez said that Marte is one of the most low maintenance and easiest guys they have on the team. He said he's so easy. He doesn't require almost any work. He said he had always watched him from a distance before and described him to me as the complete dynamic player. He said he's always right in the middle of everything their offense does. And I asked him why he thinks he's so low maintenance. And he said he just has God given talent where if he wanted to, Marte could show up 10 minutes before and still perform the way he does. Obviously, that's not the case, but there's no doubt that Marte has contributed greatly to this offense. But what has impressed you guys the most about him? Oh, everything. Uh, Michelle, he's uh, hustles. That's I, impressed me from the get go is his hustle, his smile, his attitude. Um, and the fact, you know, he's played mostly left field and how he's just taken to right field like a fish to water. It's a really hard game. And I marvel at those guys that just seem to have fun playing it. He's got a big smile on his face most of the time. And you're right, Michelle. Um, he's got the body of a, a, a lightweight boxer. Starling Marte, if he had grown up in a different environment, might well be a running back. He might well be a point guard. Yeah. He might well be uh, a midfielder. He looks like a DB. DB to me. He could. He could play any sport and be <laughs> successful. That's right. Wide receiver. No. Lindor hit a two-run homer his last time up, batting right-handed. Now batting left-handed against Floro. And he hits one sharply, but right at Rojas in the shift. Or is that Birdie? And that's Birdie throwing him out. And that's the second out. Five-three put out from the right side. And keep track of our fives and our oh, sixes. Oh, I tell you. It's killing my wideouts. By the way, Lindor with the two run homer in the third, 51 RBIs now. You know what the record is for a Mets shortstop in a season? 79. 72. <laughs> Ahmed Rosario, 2019. So, going to obliterate that record if yes. it stays healthy. Uh, he's looking for the century mark. Speaking of Rosario, you see how he and Andres Jimenez are doing? Yeah. I mean, Rosario's starting to hit now, but he managed hitting over 300. So everybody involved in that trade is having a nice year. Carrie, you were saying before that Lindor had not had his uh, 51st RBI to September 12th last year. Well, in his career, the earliest he's ever had 51 RBIs was in Cleveland when he had, in July 2nd, was the earliest he ever had 51 RBIs wow. when he had his career high 92 that year. So he's already two weeks ahead of that pace. Thanks to Dave Freed for that. I asked I think you should, and I received. I think you should share the credit for it, you and Dave. You asked. Yes. He researched. It's a 50-50 split on royalties there. What do you think the check will be for? Well, I, I don't know what I'm going to get, but I know Dave will invoice for it. Try to settle for a cookie. Yeah. <laughs> Alonzo's been up twice, flied out both times. Maybe I can get him something to say thank you. Russ, you got anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope, uh, you know. Keith and Russ included Dave in the uh, Father's Day celebration. Well, Dave doesn't dress. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Slovenly. <laughs> wow. 
That's right. It's up to Slava. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, casual would have been one thing, but slobbering, that's just going all the way to the seven deadly sins. <laughs> Pete with 63 RBIs, Lindor with 51. It's the third earliest that the Mets have ever had two guys with 50. 1996, Todd Hundley and Bernard Gilkey did it in 62 games. 2006, mm. Carlos Beltran and David Wright in 65 games. Alonzo strikes out. One, two, three inning for Floro. Still three nothing. Sixth inning, three nothing New York. Nick Fortes leads off against Taiwan Walker, who has been right at the pinnacle of his game tonight. Gave up an infield single leading off the first inning. Has subsequently retired 15 in a row, striking out nine of the 15. And a first pitch curveball mm. in for a strike to Fortes. Just keeping it simple and mm. making it look easy. This is with a slider, and it's one and one. Fortes grounded out to second base his first time up. 68 pitches through five innings. That's hard to do with nine strikeouts. Eight, nine, and one in the order in the sixth inning. Fortez is making his eighth start of the year. I think his choice of pitches uh, probably the doesn't he uses his fastball sparingly. He mm. likes his slider, likes his splitter, he likes his overhand curve too. He mixes them up. Well, if you look at his breakdown this year, he's only thrown his fastball 38 percent right. of the time. <laughs> Yeah, he pitches backwards. You know, he gets you looking at a lot of slow stuff, and then if he gets you had two strikes, he pops you up upstairs with that fastball. The great one. Turk Wendell fan club. <laughs> oh, you were going Gretzky. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Turk. <laughs> you know the story that um, Taiwan had double zero when he went to Toronto. But he couldn't take double zero when he came here because it was Mr. Mets number. Two hopper handled by Lindor. A lot of white showing. Yeah. But Francisco was able to throw him out. That ball almost came out of the top of Lindor's glove. So it slid right up. 16 in a row. 31 of his last 35 if you count the Angels. He's had everything working. Breaking ball to start. The strikeouts. Chisholm. He's had the slider, fastball. Just think of the at bat that Fortes just took. Curveball, slider, split, slider, fastball, split. It's almost like he consciously never throws two pitches the same in a row. Half of his strikeouts are fastballs. Dela Cruz takes a fastball for a strike. Watch, watch this ball on Lindor slide almost out of his glove. Yep, sure did. You know, we were talking about Lewin Diaz before as Lindor gets in front of this one. And off the bang, Alonso makes the tag. Nicely done by Pete to save Lindor an error. Two out. Well, he had plenty of time to set himself on this throw, and he just throws it into the runner. But he's over the top. No, he just let go with that ball's running back down the line. Good choice by Pete. He's not going to be able to stretch, get there, and make the tag. So two out, and that is 17 in a row for Taiwan Walker. Now the only man to reach against him, John Birdie. And he takes a slider for a strike. Anyway, we were talking about Lewin Diaz and using a glove that, you know, just out of the box that they were trying to break in. Lindor does that all the time. Yeah. He's using a new glove almost all the time and I think sometimes on a play like that the glove not being broken in gets you in trouble. You've been the highlight right they could have the Sesta yeah. which is formed like that and the ball will come shooting out of the top of the Sesta. Well that's kind of what happens to Francisco with his glove occasionally. He likes the stiffness of it obviously mm -hmm. and Ray Ordonez was the same way. But that can work for you and against him. 
One and two the count to John Birdie. And the slider just off the plate two and two. Boy, if, when he's missed he has missed by millimeters today. Every per pitch has a purpose. If you watch very rarely does he throw anything that's not at Nito's target. Two two. In mm. the dirt. I wouldn't miss. Of course on cue. <laughs> Three and two. Oh my goodness. Put the pressure on him. <laughs> yeah. It's only his second three ball count of the day. Jimmy Yacobonis, who pitched last night, is up again in the Miami bullpen. There's that old Houston Astro uniform out there in the backdrop and that wall behind the the visitors' bullpen. 3 2. Back to Walker. He's got it. And that retires the side. 18 in a row retired by Taiwan Walker, matching a career high. 3 0 Mets in the sixth. Brought to you by your local Ford stores. By Astound Broadband powered by RCN. Visit Astound.com for fast, reliable internet. And by Burns and Harris. Suffered pain? You need law. Call 800 Pain Law. I absolutely love this montage here. It must have been Helmet Day, Gary. Helmet Day. It used to be a big day at the ballpark. Get adjusted inside to your head size. And completely did not protect your head. No. From anything. No. It was uh, very, very thin plastic. Very plastic. <laughs> Bob Montgomery like. Monty was the last catcher who didn't wear a helmet. That's right. Mets in game box score brought to you by Spectrum. Two run homer by Francisco Lindor. RBI single for Jeff McNeil. And that has been plenty for Taiwan Walker, who's never been better. Gave up an infield hit. To the leadoff hitter in the first, and since then has retired 18 in a row. Jimmy Yacobonis, who worked an inning last night, back for more today. Mark Canna leads off in the home sixth inning. Yacobonis spent all of the 21 season in the Seattle organization, pitching for Tacoma, had a great year, signed as a free agent then, and right before Thanksgiving with the Marlins. Can has been a bit on base twice with a single and a walk. He's scored a run. And he takes a fastball for a strike. It's one and one. Braxton Garrett went the first four innings for Miami, allowed three runs, five hits, two walks, no strikeouts. Dylan Floro worked a one, two, three, fifth, and now Yacobonis in the sixth. Yesterday, Miami got five and a third out of their starter, Pablo Lopez, and used three relievers. Tomorrow is the one day of the week that Don Mattingly can put his starter out there and not worry about having to run through his bullpen. Well, you can't, you know, don't don't bet the house on it. You no. never know. Even Tom Seaver got shelled once in a while. It's blasphemy. <laughs> Point well taken. <laughs> it's the plan anyway. Yes. And that fastball on the corner for a strike two and two. J.D. Davis on deck then Eduardo Escobar. What was Tom's line in that game when the Montreal Expos beat him on opening day? A four and change I think. Interested to see today. The White Sox in Houston were playing Verlander against Cueto and Verlander exited first seven nothing White Sox. Rare bad start for Verlander who's made an amazing comeback at age 39. And I was only looking to see if Verlander was going to start against the Mets. He will not. That's too bad. Yeah. Going to get Fran Rivaldo. Last time we saw Fran Rivaldo, the Mets broke his hand. He tried, that spring training? That's right. He tried to uh, field the ball with his bare hand. And who are you getting? Valdez and Urquidy? I don't know what to look. Okay. Verlander three and two thirds, four runs, nine hits today. Mm. Four earned anyway, seven runs overall. Three two coming to Canna, and he slices one down the right field line, and that's a foul ball. Didn't miss by much. Score is brought to you by Mattress Firm's July 4th sale. Get a king bed for a queen price. Cubs beat the Braves for the second straight day. Jonathan VR had a couple of RBIs. VR's really helped out his old team. Has. Scored the only run yesterday. Two RBIs today. Cubs win. Phillies and 
Nats after playing two yesterday with the Phillies sweeping. They're in the fourth, and Ronnie mentioned the White Sox knocking out Verlander. Astros don't have much to worry about. They have a nine game lead in the American League West. Again, the 3 2 to Canna, and that's outside ball four. So Canna with another terrific at bat on base for the third straight time. It's an interesting motion from Jacobona. It's kind of a three quarter arm action, uh, throws, slider, sinking fastball. That's a change up grip. But very unusual motion kind of spins off that around that front foot ends up going almost backwards after releasing. Ronnie I think it's going to be Urquidy and Garcia. Oh, OK. The Astros rock the baby with Garcia. There's J.D. Davis has walked in single. Breaking oh. ball popped up. <laughs> you heard J.D. He had a pitch to hit. He fouled it off. Wind blew it back into the stands. I think he was set up to go to the opposite field, and that breaking ball stayed inside and crowded him. And he's kind of helping it get out, get into the seats. Well, that wind blowing in from left field certainly helped push that ball. Out of play. JD had a hard single to center his last time up. Well, I would recommend before the Mets go to Houston, someone's going to have to figure out the game plan for Jordan Alvarez because no one else is getting him out. Well, we mentioned it the other night. Jordan Alvarez, fastest left hand hitter to 150 extra mm -hmm. base hits since Ted Williams. It's pretty good territory. And the curveball inside, two and one to Davis. His last 17 games, Gary, his slash line is 476 average, 541 on base, 857 slug. They've got hitters in that lineup. Yeah. I mean, it's not just him. I mean, Altuve, right. Guriel, Brantley, Bregman, Bregman, yeah. Tucker. Tucker's been hot. Yeah. Yesterday was Brantley hitting a grand slam in a 10 run sixth inning. And they blew out the White Sox for their 40th win. Two and one to JD. Fouls off and up and in fastball. Jacobonis pitched for Buck Showalter in Baltimore at the first part of his career. Showing off of the old boss. I mean, between Yankees, Arizona, Texas, Baltimore. I mean, Buck's managed a lot of guys. Yes, he has. Guys who are playing, guys who are managing. Little bloop down the right field line. Foul. Mm. Rocky Blyer, Richard Blyer. Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> Richard Bly has been around a long time. He also pitched for Buck Showalter. Buck managed the manager of the Marlins. That's right. When Buck's last year with the Yankees was Donnie's last year with the Yankees. I was still playing when Buck managed the Yankees. And LaRusso almost came to blows in Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Never forget it. That would be fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember why? Uh, because uh, the Yankees were pitching the A's inside, hit a couple of batters, and that used to drive LaRusso crazy. Because his guys never threw inside to anybody? No, his, his guys. <laughs> who, 
hit our batters uh, were very vulnerable inside. So well, your batters were very large. <laughs> That's right. Especially Ken Seiko and McGuire. Dave Henderson. Carney Lansford. Two two come and the breaking ball fouled off. So we said before that the Mets shortstop RBI record belonged to Ahmed Rosario. That yeah. is not true. Jose Reyes had 81 RBIs in 2006. Hmm. Very much was a shortstop that year. I saw that Jose Reyes was at the ballpark. I think the last he couple was. of days. Yeah, That's great. Going to be back for Old Timers Day in late August. Looks like he'd still play. I was thinking when somebody said that, well, maybe he was playing second base that year. Remember when they got Kaz Matsui in 04, yes. they moved Reyes to second base. That was another brilliant move. <laughs> <laughs> Swing and a miss, and Davis down on strikes. <laughs> That's the first out. That was not. That wasn't the worst of it. Do you remember when they tried to teach him how to run differently? Yes. Because he kept, you know, getting hamstring injuries. Yeah. They sent him to Mackie Shulstone to try and change his running gait. This guy who was one of the most elegant. Beautiful runners yeah, yeah. ever. <laughs> yeah. Here's Eduardo Escobar with one out and one on. Escobar has flied out and hit a hard ground ball to third in his first game back in the lineup after missing a couple of days with some medical issues. And that curves in for a strike. Mm. Escobar trying to snap an 0 for 16 stretch. Funny how hot and cold he's been. Right? Yeah. And a great beginning to the road trip, including the cycle in San Diego, but has not hit much since. Mm. He chases sinker from Yacobonis, and it's 0 and 2. Kind of waved at that one. Machinations on the infield. Birdie moving over into the uh, into the slot. Folks, Back position, folks. You're not hallucinating. That's 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 happening. It's happening. <laughs> Do not adjust your dial. Yes. On the inside corner, and Yakubonis strikes out Escobar. So Escobar. back to back strikeouts. Escobar got upset from the get go on that at bat on that outside corner curveball. This one might have had the plate. That it did. Yeah, nice. He's angry about the first strike call. Don Mattingly's going to make a pitching change with McNeil coming up. He wants his left hander. And so Richard Blyer will come in to face McNeil with Canada at first and two out. Three nothing Mets in the sixth. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. The World's Fair. And still maintaining his presence in Flushy Meadow Park. Another guy who pitched for Buck Showalter, mm. Richard Blyer, in to pitch for the Marlins. Blyer in to face McNeil, checks in on Canna. He's got a good move, but Richard Blyer, Southpaw's numbers have been very rocky this year. Left handed hitters are at 321, right handed hitters 349. Ouch. Neal one for five in his career against Blyer. And gets a first pitch curveball that misses for ball one. Neal had a base hit to drive and a run with two out in the second. That's here with two out in the sixth with the Mets up three nothing. And more papers go flying around in shallow center field. Seems to be the gathering point for most of the day breed today. Just out behind second base in shallow center. Napkins, the gathering. Above the overcast skies, no shadows on the field today it would, would hinder the hitters. But does the debris distract you as a hitter? Blowing around, Keith? Not in the outfield. I never liked it in front, in between the home plate and the mound. I would always go get it myself. Would you pick it up and put it in your back pocket? Yes. Or depending on the wind, if it's windy, find out which you know which way the wind's blowing and mm. get rid of it. 
Don't need a weatherman. <laughs> Three and out of McNeil. Blyer finally gets a strike call. Three and one. Tomas Nito would be next. Oh, you guys, I'm getting a little chilly. It's getting chilly. They put our heaters away for the summer. <laughs> First thing I asked when I came in today, I was saying, nope. <laughs> and you know, Russ never says no to what, what do you mean they put him away? Russ, Russ always says yes, no matter what. But I mean, the first time in 17 years he said no. Behind us, uh, we have like a janitor's closet looking kind of uh, thing. Right. I mean, how can we lose anything? Where, where is it? Oh, wait a second. Russ, Russ is, is coming with an alternate <laughs> method of staying warm. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Thank, thank you, Russ. Oh, that's very nice. Of you. Whoa. Canna gets set to run and McNeil oh. strikes out and that ends the inning. So McNeil after getting ahead three and oh strikes out against Blyer still three nothing. I feel like I'm with my rabbi. Is this a meth blanket? <laughs> An amazing day for Taiwan Walker. First battery face today John Birdie hit a ground ball in the hole at short. Lindor's throw on one hop just barely eluded the glove of Pete Alonzo and Birdie beat it out for an infield hit. And since then, Walker's retired 18 Marlins in a row, matching the longest consecutive batter's retired streak of his career. Jazz Chisholm leads off the seventh and takes a splitter outside for ball one. Here's your Marlins in-game box score brought to you by Spectrum Mobile. That one skinny hit for Birdie, and that's been it. And the slider misses inside. A rare time Walker behind on the count. Here's the hit leading off the first inning. Tough in between hop for Pete. I mean, it was a very tough hop, but if he had been yeah. able to make it, the ball was there in time to get the out. Just couldn't quite squeeze it. And he wound up being an infield hit. Now it's 3 0 to Chisholm, and that's ball four. So a four pitch walk to Jazz Chisholm, leading off in the seventh, snaps Walker's streak of 18 straight retired. You know, seeing that play from Francisco Lindor really shows you how the infielders understand the timing of plays. He had to rush it just a bit because of the speed of Birdie, and that probably accounted. For the errant throw. So Walker. Now back to the stretch to face Solaire. First time he's been in the stretch since the first inning. Jorge Solaire has taken a call third strike and fly it out. Nope. Now usually at this part of the game, with a hitter like Solaire who with one swing can get you back in the game, you wouldn't really feel threatened by Chisholm at first. <laughs> As a stolen base candidate. Solaire gets one in the air to right center. Ball carrying out that way, but Marte backpedals onto the warning track to make the catch. And Chisholm goes back to first. And Walker survives that at bat against Solaire for the first out. Really hold your breath with Solaire. He's got such incredible power. Former American League home run champ, last year's World Series MVP. Hit 48 one year for That's Kansas right. City. Not a small ballpark. And the ball's been getting a little boost going out to right field today with that wind blowing mostly in from left, but a little bit across, enough to give it a little push out toward right field. As Garrett Cooper is struck out in both his at bats. Cooper went down looking in the first, swinging in the fourth. Two of the nine strikeouts for Walker, who has never had back to back double digit strikeout games in his career. Struck out 10 in his last start against the Angels, nine so far today. And Cooper gets jammed and rolls it foul, one and one. We've seen Taiwan throw his two seamer more today than in recent starts. He's just thrown everything. Uh, you know, there's a. Very rare games where all of your pitches you have control of. You can throw them wherever you want, whatever is called. And he's having one of those rare days. This will be his 90th pitch of the day.
he hasn't made a mistake with a slider. Mm. Slider's been a pitch he's been able to keep getting the, the hitters to chase. And he hasn't missed over the middle with that pitch. Two balls and a strike to Cooper. Cooper's having a really nice year. Came into the day fifth in the National League in batting. Able to stay healthy so far this year, which has been really the concern throughout his career. Avi Garcia on deck. 2 1 coming, and he gets jammed again and fouls it off. Another two seamer coming out on his hands, and it's 2 and 2. Well, he's got two pitches he can get a ground ball with that two seamer down, running down and in if he pulls it, and that's put finger down where he can roll it over. Garcia again getting very close to the plate. Out of the on deck circle. Chisholm has 10 steals this year. He's been caught three times. Two two coming Chisholm runs the pitch is high Nito's throw to the wrong side of the bag and the ball trickles by McNeil. And Chisholm steals the base his 11th of the year. Well, there's your straight in slide, feet first. This is a gamble. You get thrown out if you had a good play. And if the throw was on the right side of the bag, he would have been thrown out. But the feet first, the slide gets you right there quickest. And the spike keeps you on the bag. 3 2. Cooper lifts one to center. Nimmo easing back, has room. Chisholm tagging at second. Nimmo makes the catch. Chisholm moves over to third, but that's the second out. So a couple of fly ball outs for Walker. Two out in the inning, and now obviously, obviously Garcia comes up. Smith up in the Mets bullpen. Walker now up over 90 pitches. His longest outing this year has been seven innings. He's done that twice. Trying to get through seven today. Garcia's grounded out and struck out. And he takes a fastball that just missed. Ball one. Mm. Slider fouled. The ball on a strike. That's that slider he's been throwing, Ronnie, all yep. game. It, he hasn't missed one in the middle of the plate. They've all been on the outside corner or off. And because it's off the plate, he can get it up. He hasn't put it at the knees. He's thrown it belt high, which is trouble. Could be trouble, but it's been off the plate. And Garcia goes after the splitter and comes up empty and it's one and two. Now we'll get a lot of hitters. A lot of right hand hitters won't make contact on that one. That was a good pitch. Last ball up we'll go back with the same pitch Keith. The way he's going. Anything he wants. One two coming. Slider line toward the gap in right center field and that's going to go up the gap and all the way to the wall Chisholm's in with the first Miami run Garcia to second he'll pull in there with an opposite field double and the Marlins are on the board it's now three to one New York and that's going to be all for Taiwan Walker and that's the one pitch the curveball here that he's made the mistake over the plate to say he's got a 12 to well that's a slider right Ron there's your hanger he hung it. Taiwan was one strike away from getting through seven. He'll settle for six and two thirds and get a big ovation from the crowd at City Field. <laughs> Terrific effort by Walker. Called to the bullpen brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. 
watch Picks 11 and SNY Mets games live, pre and post game shows, and all SNY programming anytime, anywhere, on any device with an in market TV provider subscription. Scan the code and download now. Drew Smith in to face Lewin Diaz and gets the first slider in for a strike, nothing and one. The numbers of Drew Smith, only one run allowed in his last eight outings, wants to stop this right here. Or two nights ago against Milwaukee, gave up a couple of hits, but no runs. Diaz swings through a fastball and it's quickly 0 and 2. Now one Walker. Probably most upset yeah. I would think about the leadoff walk to Jazz Chisholm. Absolutely. Oh and 2 to Diaz. And he lifts one foul. I, I think he's mad at two things. You're right. The walk, Gary. But he had set up Garcia. And he had thrown a split finger by him. He had thrown a slider. That was a good pitch. And he just needed to make one more pitch to get through the inning. Sometimes it doesn't happen. We were thinking about that six hours from now over dinner. Tying run at the plate in a 3 1 game, and Diaz just got a piece of the curveball to stay in the at bat. Well, tonight, a couple hours after the game for dinner. Different start time. Well, Walker has nothing to be upset about today. 18 straight retired was in firm command most of the day. That's got him a few runs to work with early. And then he leaves with the lead. 0 2 coming to Diaz. And that's fouled away. Even Diaz just called up yesterday. 25 year old who's had some time the last couple of years with the Marlins, but blocked right now by the combination of Aguilar and Cooper, which is why he had been in the minors to this point. Aguilar on the COVID IL. Lewin Diaz getting a chance. And Drew Smith trying to get him out in a big spot. 0 2 coming. Comes inside with the fastball at 97. 1 and 2. The Yankees won again today. They beat Alec Manoa. That's not mm. easy to do. They shut out the Blue Jays 4 0 behind yeah. Jamison Tyone. That puts uh, the Blue Jays 12 back. The Yankees have won 9 in a row, 16 of 17. 1 2 coming. Curve ball outside. And it's 2 and 2. And Diaz, after falling behind quickly, is hung in nicely in this at bat. Tampa Bay and Toronto are closer to Baltimore at the bottom in that division than they are the Yankees at the top. You got a point there. <laughs> Red Sox may be getting ready to pass the uh, Blue Jays in the race. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming. And Diaz takes it high. And now it's a full count. Miguel Rojas would be next. Drew Smith was ahead on Lewin Diaz 0 and 2. Now it's 3 and 2. Struck him out. 3 2 slider. Smith strikes out Diaz and limits the damage in the seventh inning. Wow. Terrific outing for Taiwan Walker. One huge out for Drew Smith. Seventh center at NYU Lango and Health. Jacob DeGrom bullpen session yesterday. There were uh, two up downs. Two up downs, yes. He'll continue his mound progression. Learning new phrases all the time. Tomas Nito leads off. It's one down to Lewin Diaz, who plucks it and makes the play. One pitch and one out for Richard Blyer in the home seven. Today's starters, Braxton Garrett, third start of the year, gave up three runs in the first three innings. The last at four. Tomlin Walker was wonderful. One point retiring 18 in a row. ERA now through his first 11 starts this year is 2.88. Brought to you by your local tri state Volkswagen dealers. Brandon Nimmo has been up three times grounded out to the right side all three. That's seven out of hit since J.D. Davis is single in the third. They've had just one base runner since. I mean it started out as an unseasonably cool June day. It's yeah. turned into really chilly right late ahead. afternoon early evening. He was head up in the bullpen for Miami. He worked last night. Wire behind on Nimmo 2 0. 
Brandon hits one off the glove right to the shortstop Rojas one six three put out two out. Who's done well against the Marlins over the years well Lance Johnson who once had 227 hits in a season for the Mets at 417 against the Marlins. David Wright. David Wright as you would expect. Now lighter 12 wins. Santana's ERA would have been under one if Reed Johnson didn't play for the Miami Marlins. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Pitching change right hander coming in to face Marte. Three one Mets in the seventh call to the bullpen brought to you by Toyota. Lewis head on to pitch gets the first pitch slider over for a strike to Starling Marte had a clean inning last night's ball game came over from Tampa Bay in a trade he retired Marte on a ground ball last night Marte is one for three today singled in the third and scored a run and he takes one out to right field slicing away from Garcia to get over his head and off the base of the wall bouncing away from Garcia Marte to second but with the bad wheel he's not going to try for three. He'll stop there with an opposite field double. Well, the ball's been sailing out to right field all day. Garcia tends to play shallow anyway, and that wouldn't beat him. Well, this one beat him because it's not a fly ball, it's a line drive. And there's no way he's going to get there, and that's going to, wind's going to blow it away from him. Short hops the wall. He thought it might have been blown, going to be a blown foul. I don't know Keith I think when he hit it he thought it was going to be caught. Oh OK. You might be right. Yeah. There's Lindor who hit a two run homer back in the third. That came batting right handed. Takes a strike. From head. That's with their sixth hit of the afternoon. Marte has two of the six. <laughs> Lindor has the biggest one. Three run homer last night, two run homer today. And the door pops one up. Got a hustle, you don't know. Uh oh. Rojas takes charge of it. That retires the side. On to the eighth we go, three to one New York. Dave congratulates Christine Drago. The grand prize winner in the Hyundai Salute to Heroes contest by Optimum, by Grubhub, and by Tourism Ireland. Plan your dream vacation at Ireland.com. Eighth inning at City Field. He's moved quickly in downtown Flushing. Well, that was a tough left to make right there. <laughs> Drew Smith deals to Miguel Rojas and picks off the outside corner for a strike. Rojas was up twice against Taiwan Walker, struck out both times. One for five in this series. Marlins have had just two hits today an infield single by Birdie in the first, a double by Garcia in the seventh. And the slider misses down, a ball and a strike. Nick Fortes on deck, then Brian De La Cruz, seven, eight, and nine in the Marlins batting order. Smith got the final out in the seventh, striking out Lewin Diaz in a nine pitch at bat. Now staying out there for the eighth. And he gets the slider in for a strike. And it's one and two. Watching all the players and Drew Smith, June 18th, blowing in their hands, just trying to get some heat. 63 degrees right now, 22 mile an hour wind blowing out of the northwest. It is chilly. And it's kind of shifted. It's it's blowing in the booth. And he's held up on the swing. Steady dive of sliders here for Rojas, and it's two and two. These flags are stiff. All the folks who came in t shirts and shorts today. Hang with them. Different kind of day. 2 2 coming. Another breaking ball. This one's popped up. Playable for Alonzo behind the bag. 
In foul ground, he's got it, one out. So Smith retires the first batter in the eighth. Catch him if you can. Oh, the foam fingers. Foam finger, he caught it. He's got the double foam. Yeah. yeah. Now Nick Fortes has been up twice and grounded out both times. And a check swing mm -hmm. foul on the fastball. Nothing in one. Nick Fortes from Deland, Florida. So oh. in town as Jacob DeGrom. Right. Stetson University. Cortez though went to Ole Miss. Beautiful Oxford, Mississippi. You've been there. I, I have. Oh, it is beautiful. Just gorgeous. Is it? It's time to be there. Stop by Square Books. Tomorrow, right back here on Picks 11. Pre-game begins at one. Game time set for 1:40. Mets and Marlins. Chris Bassett, Sandy Alcantara. O2 coming. And the slider off the plate, one and two. What are those big trees in that part of the world? Magnolia. Oh, man. Yes. Love those. Sugar magnolia. Great for that. <laughs> one, two coming. Struck him out. Drew Smith blows away Nick Fortez. Two men down. Well, there should be no rotation of the hips here with this swing. Nope. So Smith's faced three batters, retired them all, two via the strikeout. Now Brian De La Cruz with two out and nobody on. And he swings through the fastball, nothing one, and Drew Smith fielding large right now. Trying to get the Mets through the eighth and set it up for Edwin Diaz for the ninth. De La Cruz has twice grounded out to short today. And he overthrew that fastball one and one. He was feeling large, Garrett. <laughs> Sometimes you feel a little <laughs> overly large. It's all right to get humble. Happened to us all. A couple of deep breaths. And the curveball fouled off, and now it's one and two. I have not seen Drew in an appearance throw this much of secondary pitches. Yeah. It's breaking stuff. I haven't seen him work with this kind of tempo either. I like that. Cold. But that maybe that's it. it. Stay warm. Pitch like you're cold. One and two to De La Cruz. And the slider off the plate, two and two. Taiwan Walker went six and two thirds, one run, two hits, one walk, nine strikeouts, 97 pitches. Brilliant effort by Taiwan. In line for his fifth win of the year. Drew Smith trying to finish off the top of the eighth. Two two coming. Struck him out. What a performance by Drew Smith. Four batters faced, all retired, three strikeouts. Five thousand fans in attendance will receive a free cap. Compliments of Delta Airlines. Get your tickets directly from the source at Mets.com slash tickets. More doings in downtown Flushing. Busy, busy, on, busy. A few, few more bills in that case. Come on. Guys working hard. Pete Alonzo leads off in the home eighth. Pete's gone 0 for 3 today. Two fly balls and a strikeout. Alonzo Canna and Davis against Lewis Head. We got the final out of the seventh. Head, no relation to the Monkeys album of the same name. Or the uh, tennis equipment. Ah, yes. Edwin Diaz up in the Mets bullpen getting ready for the save opportunity. We'll have the top of the batting order coming up for Miami. Birdie, Chisholm, and Soler in the top of the ninth. And Alonzo takes the up and in fastball, two and one. 
Braxton Garrett is on the hook. He went four innings, allowed three runs, five hits. Miami bullpen's been good. They've given up only one hit over their three innings of work. And that was by head. Two one. <laughs> big Pete cut. Was back a fastball two and two. Big cut by a big Pete. Was a nice hitting to score one, wouldn't it? Three on the left side against Alonzo. Gets a breaking ball and flies it out to right center. De La Cruz cutting across. One out. The Phillies and Nationals no score in the sixth. And then they're going to the seventh now. Still no score. Josiah Gray for Washington. Six scoreless. They let him throw 117 pitches. Ooh. Wow. So the kid from Westchester. Double header yesterday, right? Right. Yeah, maybe that's part of it. He went to New Rochelle High School and Miami used to have a pitcher from there, Tom Kohler. Josiah went on to Lemoyne College. I don't know that college. I know it's upstate, yeah, right? Syracuse, yeah. yeah. You're amazing for all this background information you have, John. You, gotta, you, you know, <laughs> you think it's a blessing, it's a curse. <laughs> think of all the useless stuff that's, that's right. stored in these brains. And so he's wearing headphones to <laughs> make sure he doesn't have to hear any of it. Mark Cannon has been on base three times with a single and two walks. Canna is so methodical at the plate. You just feel like he his brain. We we're just talking about brains. It's just going over every possibility of what is going to happen in this next pitch. Well, just as pitchers are going to have to make an adjustment when they finally institute a pitch clock, so are hitters like Canna, who takes so much time outside the box. I mean, the rules in the minor leagues force pitchers to throw within 14 seconds with nobody on, 18 or 19 seconds with men on. But it forces the hitter to get in the box with nine seconds left on that clock. So that would be a major adjustment for a guy like Ken. A lot of uh, a lot of pressure going to be put on the umpires to, you know, be be able to enforce it. Well, it'll be interesting to see if and when that happens. Fly ball out the center. Another chance for De La Cruz. And number two. Out. All I know is that everybody who has gone to the minor leagues to watch the games with the pitch clock comes back raving about its effectiveness. I, I've watched a couple of innings. I wouldn't say a lot. I've watched maybe six innings total of streaming minor league games that have a pitch timer. It's phenomenal. It really is. It's it's noticeable. It's the way the game used to be paced in the 70s and 80s. Right? It's not necessarily a. I don't think it's a hardship for anybody once they adjust to the idea. JD skies one to right. And Garcia tracks it on the wind. Stays with it for the third out. Three fly ball out for head. And now it's time to sound the trumpet. Said with Diaz coming on for the save.
Alaska Jackson, Timmy Trumpet, heralding the arrival of Edwin Diaz, who is striking out nearly two batters an inning. <laughs> He'll face the top of the batting order with a three to one lead. John Birdie leads off and takes a fastball for a strike, nothing and one. Two batters an inning, 50% of the batters he's facing. Team 26, ERA great. 50 punch outs in 26 and a third. 17.1 strikeouts per nine innings. Birdie had the leadoff hit against Taiwan Walker in the first. Since then, he struck out and grounded out. And he pokes one the other way, and Birdie's got a base hit. How about that? That was very impressive by John Birdie. Nobody's been hitting that slider all year, and he took it to right field. And that was a good spot that's down and away. And if there's any hitter that you do not want on the bases for the Marlins, it's Birdie, although it's a two run advantage. Right. He's not the tying run. But the guy at the plate now will be. Correct. And that's Jazz Chisholm, who has 13 home runs this year. And Chisholm takes a fastball outside for ball one. Chisholm today, 0 for 2 in a walk. Jorge Soler, a big time home run hitter, waiting on deck. Birdie runs. The throw by Nito is high and goes into center field. Birdie will stay put. Now he'll take off for third. Don't throw it. And Nimmo's throw to third base, not in time. So it's a stolen base for Birdie, his third of the day. Takes third on the air. Oftentimes, when a runner goes in that situation, he won't even throw the ball since that run means nothing. But Nito chose to. That's a rare bad throw from Nito. Lindor with the fake. Might have kept Birdie on that base for a couple of beats. One and one to Chisholm. One and two to Chisholm. After the foul ball. <laughs> that pitchers have struck out 12 over the first eight innings. One two coming to Chisholm. And he fouls back the fastball. And again, because of the construction of this lineup, Birdie's on, his run doesn't count. But if Chisholm gets on, changes this game. Diaz is not allowed to run in his last seven outings. Even though that runner at third means nothing, he'd still like to keep him off the board. One two to Chisholm on the inside corner got him looking mm. second time Chisholm has been called out today he was incredulous the first time he's a little more demonstrative this time I think he's got an argument I, I agree and now he's been ejected from the game and now Don Mattingly will come out interesting that it took Mattingly that long to come out that he waited for Chisholm to be ejected before he came out to help his player. And now Chisholm could be getting himself in more trouble as it continues to jaw. This is where the coaches, Alan Porter, is trying to do it, but the coach and staff should be taking him off the field. Alan Porter is about as strong as any player on the field. Well, Pucci took matters into his own hands. Well, if you bring in the robotic umpires, it takes away something like this. You know, fans love it. So one out. Here's Jorge Soler. Time run at the plate. I thought it was inside, and it certainly was. Yeah. Soler is 0 for 3 today. And he chases the slider, and it's nothing in two. Keep that. Keep that. The slider's about six, so that's the ball inside, just off the plate. Chisholm is right. 0-2 to Solaire. And he laid off the slider, one and two. 
the wind is whipping maybe more than it has yep. all game. Mm -hmm. Garrett Cooper on deck. One two to Solaire. And this is low of the slider. Two and two. The way the weather is now, the threat is not as much on the pull side, but anything that's hit in the air to right field. Ball's been flying out that way today. Birdie at third with one out. Two two to Solaire. Lifted foul off the right side. Solaire 12 home runs this year. 27 last year. 48 in 2019. He is a legitimate threat. Again the 2 2. Struck him out. Diaz with a slider fan Solaire two men down. It's on a 45 degree angle. It's about six inch break. Starts on the plate. Nasty. 27th appearance this year for Diaz. In 19 of the 27 he's had at least two strikeouts. <laughs> wow. One more out to get. Garrett Cooper the batter. Cooper's 0 for 3 today. Tying run at the plate. He has four home runs this year. And a fastball in for a strike. Nothing at all. Met pitchers had 11 strikeouts last night. In today's game, they got 14. Nine by Walker, three by Smith, and Diaz is fan two. And Cooper oh. tried to hold, and he stopped it in time. A ball and a strike. The unpredictability of Diaz after those nasty sliders to Soler, two straight fastballs to Cooper. 1 1 to Cooper and a fastball off the plate at 100 miles an hour 2 and 1. If Cooper could keep it going. Obviously El Garcia would be next. And Cooper lines one into center field for a base hit that'll bring in birdie and break up the shutout but most importantly it puts the tying run on base with two out. It's now 3 to 2 New York. So Cooper drives in a run his 29th of the year. Quite enough bat by Cooper. I yes. can see why he's having a great year. Well he didn't expand the strike zone here. He threw it for a strike kind of not a great slider from Diaz. Luke Williams will run for Cooper at first base. So there's Williams carrying the tying run. And Garcia the batter Garcia drove in the first Miami run with a double to right center against Walker in the seventh. Three two New York ninth inning. There goes Williams swung and Whoa. fouled off. Wow Williams had a pretty big jump taking a big gamble. Risky making the final out at second base. But Garcia who swings at just about everything swung at that and fouled it off. I like the move. I like the aggressiveness. Diaz is very slow to the plate. You're going to have to. If you're Buck, have Diaz at least throw a courtesy throw over there one time. And Garcia oh. has to tilt his head out of the way of a 100 mile an hour fastball. And he gives a little glare out of Diaz uh, after he does. That ball was by him before he tilted the head. He's not intentional. That'll get your attention. A little overthrow there. Garcia 0 for 3 with two strikeouts against Diaz in his career. Edwin 20 pitches deep into this ninth inning. There's a lot of run for the first time in his last eight outings. Now trying to notch the save. There goes Williams. From him from his knees, Nito too late. And the tying run is at second. The pitch was a strike. And the Marlins are down to their final strike. But Luke Williams brought in the pinch run bound and determined to steal that base. Well I'll tell you what he took that pitch it looked like to me. And if you don't if you're going to steal steal the first pitch you can't take that pitch and go one and two on a 
pitcher of this quality. So now the Marlins are down to their final strike. One two coming to Garcia. A little high, 101 miles an hour, two and two. Marlins have had their best at bats of the day in this ninth inning against Diaz. They seem to have uh, awakened. Two two from Diaz. He struck him out, and the ball game is over. Edwin Diaz bends but doesn't break. He strikes out three in the ninth to save it for Taiwan Walker. And the Mets have taken the first two of the series. Francisco Lindor homers for the second straight day. And the Mets defeat the Marlins three to two. Well, I don't think Walker's been any better than he was today. Uh, nine strikeouts, 16 strikeouts for Mets pitchers today. Diaz struck out three. Smith struck out three. What a game for the pitchers. And the Mets jump up on the board early. Get the three runs in the second and third. McNeil clutch drives in the first with a base hit. Lindor in front of Mom. Two run shot. 50 51 RBIs. 11th home run. Game summary brought to you by Big Time Bats. Go to BigTimeBats.com to see the new David Wright collection. Francisco Lindor's home run helped build the 3 0 lead. Taiwan Walker was brilliant. Drew Smith and Edwin Diaz closed it out. And the Mets have taken the first two of the series to go 21 games over 500. Jazz Chisholm, frustrated with a third strike call in the ninth, got ejected. The Mets able to celebrate a victory after Edwin Diaz. Giving up a run for the first time in eight outings. Closes it out with a strikeout as he fans Avi Garcia to end it. And the Mets have themselves a 3-2 to two win and the first two games of this four-game series. Mets win 3-2. to two. More coming up from Flushing in a moment.